Hello and welcome to Living Well with Dupuytren. My name is Bert Weikart. Many people have Dupuytren's disease and nodules in their hands, but probably very few are actually bothered by them. And in fact, we know that in very many cases these nodules remain unchanged or can even spontaneously regress. But of course, there are also those cases where the disease continues. And that always starts from such a nodule. So, it would be pretty cool if there was a treatment option that could prevent the disease from progressing. A group of researchers from Oxford, led by Professor Nan Chahel, has come up with an exciting idea to do just that, and investigated it in an initial study. More of it after the intro. About uh, 60 years ago, Vernon Luck had published a seminal paper in which she presented, among other things, a theory about the progression of Dupuytren disease. I show a short excerpt from an earlier video in which I had presented this in detail. Er hatte beobachtet, dass die Erkrankung immer zuerst mit Knoten anfing, dann entstanden Verhärtungen in der Bindegewebsplatte von den Knoten ausgehend und immer in Richtung auf das Handgelenk laufend. Die Knoten wurden dann kleiner, schrumpften zusammen und die Bindegewebsstränge gerieten unter Spannung und wirkten wie Fesseln, die die Streckung blockierten und zwar an dem Gelenk, das unmittelbar hinter dem Knoten lag. Er wusste bereits, dass die Entwicklung nicht gleichmäßig voranschreitet, sondern dass sie in jedem Stadium pausieren kann und daher auch nicht zwangsläufig in einem Zustand der maximalen Fingerverkrümmung enden muss. Aber er fand noch etwas anderes Wichtiges heraus. In den Knoten fand sich bei den mikroskopischen Untersuchungen zu Beginn der Erkrankung eine große Zahl von Bindegewebszellen, wir nennen sie Fibroblasten. Zu Beginn wirkte das Bild ungeordnet fast wie bei einem bösartigen Tumor. The Oxford colleagues have been looking for a way to act on the cells in the nodules. We call them myofibroblasts. They are somehow in between a normal connective tissue cell and a muscle cell. Internal elements can build up tension. This is the cause of tissue shortening and Dupuytren contracture. The activity of the myofibroblasts is stimulated by a certain signal substance. The researcher's idea could a suitable blocker injected directly into the nodule stop this process? A corresponding drug is indeed available and has been in use for a long time, but mainly in the treatment of rheumatic diseases. Preliminary tests in the laboratory showed that the hoped-for effect actually occurs in the cells. There was a significant reduction in the elements responsible for the tissue shortening and Dupuytren's contracture. The group then used the drug in real Dupuytren's patients. Two groups were formed. Half were treated with the drug and the other received an ineffective placebo. The effect was measured with a durometer, an instrument that can determine the hardness of tissue. Recently, the results of this study were published. A year and a half after treatment, the hardness of the placebo-treated nodules was largely unchanged but that of the treated nodules had continued to decrease. The idea and the results of the study sound convincing, but does it actually work in real life? Can the progression of the disease be reliably prevented in this way? One cannot conclude that from this study. Because Dupuytren disease progresses so slowly, patients would have to be monitored over much longer periods of time, not just a few years, but rather several decades. Nevertheless, this approach is important because it follows a new path in the treatment of this disease. It is no longer just about correcting a finger curvature, but about preventing it. I am very curious to see what will develop from this idea. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Best regards. I am Bert Weikart. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your comments. Please don't forget to subscribe.